Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for July 8th, 2021. Well, this morning, guys, a little bit of change happening here in the market all of a sudden. And so today, this may be just a little bit longer video. I've decided I'm not going to write um, a blog this morning and just put a little more time into the video. Um, so how about we settle in, let's buckle up, and let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. Um, clearly this morning, we have a shift in the market and um, potentially a tectonic shift here in the market. Now, I've been warning to be a little bit careful not to chase stocks, not to overtrade, but I certainly wasn't expecting a um, emergency announcement out of uh, Japan um, due to COVID and creating this. But we've had, we're having a, a pretty awful day of news um, besides the COVID situation. You've probably caught the news report that um, China has decided to ease monetary um, monetary systems. Um, they're easing the amount of reserves that the banks will have to hold. Um, a, an early sign that things may not be as rosy in uh, China as they've led everyone to believe um, over there. We're having uh, some serious um, conversations about Google with 16, um, excuse me, 36 states filing lawsuits, antitrust lawsuits against Google, adding to the, uh, this is the fourth major antitrust lawsuit this year. Um, as you know, Congress moves forward with antitrust bills, this is certainly going to be putting additional pressure on things. We have bonds falling extremely hard um, today with concerns that the economic growth um, around our country is um, slowing dramatically. And then we have just a, a flurry of news about, um, you know, different things um, in the market that are concerning as far as COVID outbreaks, um, vaccination uh, issues and things like that. So a flurry of things happening. Um, in in the market and creating some um well obviously some pain this morning as you can see here in the chart um we're having a significant reversal this morning and if you remember i've kind of been warning of the the fact i didn't know it was going to be this um, in any way, shape, or form, to just be really, really careful chasing stocks um, at this point because we could get one of those um, ugly, ugly moves in the market soon. And we're getting that this morning. So first off, let's take a look at the diamonds. Notice that our Dow um, right now, we're looking at 492 points down in the Dow this morning. Now we have seen that has been um, bigger than that um, earlier today. So um, you're going to want to be a little bit careful with this. Um, I suspect there is that possibility when the market opens, there could be additional selling running into the market just as you know some panic starts to come into play. So one of the things we want to recognize in here on the Dow, I need to change the weight of that arrow, but my goodness, a fat arrow there. As you can see, we have a very um, distinct top um, showing up here in the Dow at this point. And that distinct top um, 
well, could really become a, 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 a true problem here for the market um, if we continue to slide lower. And that's a big if still. There's, there's no guarantee we're going to continue to slide lower, but we should watch that carefully. When things like this start turning and the news, the news starts turning um, like it appears to be doing this morning, just all of a sudden just tons and tons of bearish news coming out and worries and concerns that the, we're not recovering. So you can see um, how this could get bad pretty quickly because we don't have um, really good support levels underneath these price, prices because we've shot up so much that there's not a lot of good support levels. Now we do have a little bit of price support right through here in the chart. And if we can hold on to that, we're, we might be in pretty good shape. Now this, this morning um, is um, supporting a break of the 50 day moving average here in the Dow. Now we do have quite a little bit of moving average support right in here, um, trying to catch that. But let's keep in mind, if that does not hold, if we continue to push on down, this could become a rather painful move to the downside. Just imagine coming down into here. We're looking at probably 1,000, 1,500 points to reach that support level in the Dow. Now that will be critical for a hold. If, if we sink below that, the hole gets really deep. Um, in the market so watch that closely now when we look at the spy we have more of a um, well an ugly um, type pullback that could occur notice our major support here in the chart is all the way down here so we could have um, a significant uh, painful pullback we're looking two plus hundred points um, in the um, SPY or the S&P 500 on a potential pullback to this support. If that support were not to hold, um, it would get really painful. And let's keep in mind that we have elevated um, a long ways away from our standard moving averages. Um, it wasn't all that long ago, remember, when we tested and broke the 50-day moving average. This is the kind of shock wave that could continue to bring that pressure to the market. So be really careful if we were to slip through there. Don't be too surprised if we retest that 50 day moving average in this move on the SPY. So just watch that carefully. One of the things I want to caution everyone, one of the one of the metrics that's been true for a long, long time is when we get a shock wave like this to rush in and buy the dip. This one might be different. Um, if we really are seeing our economies and economies around the world um, struggling here um, with growth and recovery, then this could extend. Um, we have priced stocks way above reasonable evaluations. And, and if we're going to see um, issues of a slowing economy, that could be a real problem here for the valuations of some of these stocks. So watch that careful as we start pricing this in. Now, going to be a lot of volatility today. One of the things that when we see this uh, volatility is that panic starts to set in and you're going to see a lot of folks um, having major losses this morning and um, panic could easily set in. Try to calm yourself a little bit. Look at the price supports at the charts that you're in. Look at them carefully. Make sure that you are protecting your capital, but don't panic here necessarily. Um, set those stops, make sure that um, you're protecting yourself, but don't don't just run in with a knee-jerk reaction. And on the other side of it, don't just run in with a knee-jerk reaction, I have to buy, buy, buy now because of the whole buy, buy the dip. If this cascades on itself, and it easily could cascade on itself because we've pushed into extreme valuations of the market, this could get rather painful. So try not to panic 
in this move, be thoughtful, be focused on the price action here in the market um, if this continues to move lower. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ, and this is probably our biggest risk area right now for a tremendous pain, tremendously painful pullback because when we shoot up like this we provide no price support underneath um, a move like that a reversal in here more antitrust lawsuits 36 states um, valuations extremely high if we are going to see our economies if the news is starting to shift our economies are slowing um, those kind of things state of emergency in japan china easing monetary policy um, all of these kind of things could really set off that cascade type event and let's just notice just how far down we could go to find some price support here in the NASDAQ. It's one of those reasons why I kept warning and warning and warning about the chase into that. There's not much support in here. And um, if that continues to fall, that could be a major problem. Let's just notice that if we were to measure from where we are here down into this level, um, we're looking at 300, almost 400 points um, to that price support in the NASDAQ. And that could be um, obviously very, very painful for a lot of folks if you bought up a bunch of NASDAQ stocks and chased into them here the last few days. So watch that carefully. And again, try not to panic. Um, it, it is entirely possible we bounce off of this and come right back. There's been a resiliency here in the market that has been remarkable, but at the same time, um, this may be this may be that that crack that um, could really um, create some downside moves here in the market. So just take a breath. Try to calm yourself. Focus on the price action of those charts. Try not to panic. Re remember, I also want to repeat this, guys. Um, I, I talked about this yesterday in the uh, right way options class. Always keep in mind that we shouldn't fear a sell-off. A sell-off, unless you're unless you're stubbornly holding on and refusing to see the fact that we are extended in the market. The sell-off is what creates, um, brings expensive stocks back into a much more uh, palatable price, and um, a sell-off creates opportunity. So don't fear the sell-off. Um, that is actually a good thing for the market. In fact, it's it's a healthy thing for the market if we get that sell-off. So don't fear it. But also don't um, don't panic over it. Don't chase it. Don't um, try not to um, rush in and predict that a bottom is here until we actually see some good technical indicators um, that that is the case. Now, if we come rushing right back today, hey, no harm, no foul. Um, we and and it certainly is possible that we could see buyers just rush back into this uh, stubbornly, saying, "Hey, I don't care. Um, I'm going to buy." That's certainly possible. I don't think that's a smart thing to do, but I think that's certainly possible. So watch, watch carefully, and um, just take that breath before you make a knee-jerk reaction. Let's take a look at um, IWM. And by the way. Everyone's going to get hurt in this today. Um, I, when we extend a market as far as we have, everyone is going to get hurt. Um, everyone is going to feel some pain today. So don't get the impression that, um, uh, that hey, um, somebody's making a killing out here. Um, there probably are folks that are short that are finally going to get some relief but um, there's going to be a lot of damage done today to folks' accounts, and it could get much worse before it gets better. So um, just keep that in mind. You're not alone in this move. It feels very personal, 
um, when it's your money, but it's not a personal attack. And um, just realize this, this is how the market moves. And sometimes when we overextend and we stretch and we stretch and we stretch, we get that rubber band effect where that rubber band snaps, all the new shifts, and bang, we get hit, hit pretty hard. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. Now, IWM yesterday did not did not follow through with the buying. And um, I was suggesting yesterday that this could be a problem for us with IWM kind of rejecting that high. Um, IWM yesterday closed below its 50-day moving average and now is extending lower. Notice that we will open down here on the day. And if we open down here with a lower high and a lower low, we are officially setting a downtrend now that doesn't mean that we will close down here we could rally right back and and avoid that problem but if we were to close down here that signifies um, a potential downtrend um, has uh, begin to begin to develop here on the um, iwm so watch that carefully um, breaking this trend and breaking um, breaking that 50-day moving average substantially here in the chart. Now let's take a look at the VIX here, guys. The VIX is going to spike pretty hard today. So I would suspect that we could easily see a VIX up around 20. I don't know that to be true just yet. Um, but I suspect it's going to be, well, actually I'm looking at the VIX right now. It actually is at 20.09. So we're looking at a VIX pushing right back up into this level. I'm going to put my drawings on here. We're going to push right back up into this resistance level at the open. If selling continues, and what I mean by that is if people wake up this morning, panic, and continue to sell, we could certainly see that VIX extend beyond that point. So if we break through that resistance up here, that could be a real critical uh, factor for us here. Remember, that would be a break of this downtrend. That would be a break of the major resistance level in the chart. And then any rest or pullback in here that holds above that area or holds above this downtrend could trigger that additional selling coming into the market. So it's these big fear spikes that you have to be really, really careful of. That's where uh, pain can really get intense in the market. So watch that closely. It's, it's certainly possible, guys, that we could pop up here, we could hit that resistance level, and we could reject it. We could just absolutely reject it and say, no, we don't care about um you know covid related issues we don't care that we're not seeing the market grow like we expected to those kind of things we could reject that and push that back down so um but keep a close eye on that that could be a critical move now one of the things if you're an options trader this is going to change a lot of things this morning um, we're going to see uh, market makers protecting themselves you're trying to get out of trades in options. Market makers in the morning are gonna open up those bid-ask spreads dramatically. Um, they're protecting themselves. They're, they're also going to spike the prices um, up dramatically in options in the implied volatilities. So um, there could be some major ramifications for option traders in here trying to adjust or or handle positions this morning um, getting in or getting out so be careful of that we may have to wait for a while um, depends on how much panic sets in here um, how those options will play out so watch that carefully then let's take a look at our um, t2122 now T2122 is the four week new high, new low ratio. And, and notice that yesterday, whoops, that's a two day. Notice that yesterday, we, even though we were pushing up, we continued to push and push and push to the upside. Notice that T2122 barely budged to the upside. Now, what that means, guys, is 
we still have the majority of stocks kind of drifting sideways. Um, and a, a large group actually drifting down. So when T2122 barely responds as we're pushing up um, into those new records, um, it shows that there is something odd going on here in the market. And, and what that's been is just giant tech alone lifting the markets um, to the upside. So keep in mind this morning, we're probably going to open down in here in the bearish reversal zone. So that could give us that hope that we catch a bounce on that bearish reversal zone, that we catch a bounce up off of here. Um, but let's also keep in mind if that panic does set in, we can extend, we can push down in here and stay down in here in here for a while, just like we did up here when we stayed up in this area for a while on the top side. If everything's going to be um, reset here in thinking that our economies aren't growing as fast as we had hoped, then um, and that we've pushed some of these valuations just way too far in this current environment, then we could hang around down here for just a little bit as well. So that pain could extend. Um, we'll want to watch that closely. Then let's take a look at our T2101. As we were pushing back up yesterday, I want you guys to notice that T2101 continued to sink. That's been causing me an awful lot of concern here lately that we have just not seen market breadth picking up. I suspect this morning we're going to see a spike in market breadth and it's going to be on the sell wave. So um, watch that carefully, how, how that comes out. If it follows through, just a one day move doesn't mean anything could be painful but it doesn't necessarily mean anything if it follows through and that breadth continues to extend uh, if we sell off and continue to sell that's where um, a little bit of pain or pressure could come into the market and things could get ugly pretty quickly so watch that closely this has been something i've been warning about and warning about this is odd extremely odd that we continue to set new record highs without the majority of the market supporting it. Now, I have said this um, several times, look out below if big tech starts to sell. We're likely going to see big tech selling today. And if, if that continues to extend, if we don't get that rush in to support them, if that continues to extend, there's been little holding the markets up except big tech so if big tech continues to move lower it's going to be really really difficult for the market to, to move higher and let's keep in mind just how far up we have pushed that big tech we've pushed it into such a bubble uh, type position such a long way from price support if it continues to draw down or pull back It may not even be in a panic or a really rough pullback. It could just continue to to draw down It's going to be really difficult for the market to move higher when that's occurring. Okay, so watch that closely Let's take a look at um our economic calendar for today. Now, economic calendar probably is not going to be all that heavily focused on um, this morning because of the pain that we're seeing here in the market. But we do want to recognize the fact that we do have a jobless claims number that could be important. Um, a petroleum or natural gas, not so much. EIA uh, petroleum status certainly could be a crucial number in helping to support prices. We've been seeing oil prices uh, come back here the last few days, or oil sector stocks, even though oil prices continue to go higher. Um, so watch that carefully. Um, and then Fed balance sheet later on this afternoon. But I think most people will be really focused in um, on how this market performs first thing in the morning. And we've been bouncing around a lot in futures already since I started talking. So watch that closely. Now on the earnings front, um, once again, we do have, today is our biggest day of earnings this week. Um, 
but I doubt we're going to be a, um, really focused on that unless we're holding some of these notable stocks. Some of the notables this morning would be like HE. They will be reporting today now. Obviously, this has been locked into a major range, how this reports could set a direction here on HE. We've got um, KSHB um, will be reporting today. Not what I would consider to be exactly notable. Um, so, you know, little tiny stock, not much happening here. And that's one of the things that we see in this kind of... of um, between um, earning season uh, plays. However, we're gonna look at Levi today. Um, Levi will be reporting. Looks like it is popping up a little bit on its earnings report, gapped up and pulling back. So a little bit of a pop and drop going on in there. This could be a critical, um, critical earnings report to hold above that support. Um, that could break this downtrend in here, hold, um, hold up in this area and we could start moving back to the upside here on Levi's and then last but not least PSMT would be um, one you might want to pay attention today on their earnings report um, okay, so um, pretty pretty nasty looking market today now um, I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor. We're going to look at some stocks here that could be setting up, but I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor first. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time I post a video. And then also, if you could do me a favor and smash that like button and leave a brief comment, that helps a lot. I apologize yesterday I didn't get a chance to um, answer comments. It was just one of those crazy days. Um, yesterday I didn't get a chance to do that. So um, um, please keep in mind that I, I try to answer. I do read them. I try to answer as many as possible. And hopefully you're seeing a little bit of a difference in what you see in most of the market commentary out there where it's just all about hype and prediction this is really looking at the technicals of the charts trying to determine um, how we might want to approach the market uh, for the day so if you find that to be useful please also do me a favor and share this video out there to other folks that um, may haven't had a chance to to see it so thank you to everyone who does take the time to do it and thank you to everyone who supports the channel through the buy me coffee link uh, just below the title of the video you guys are awesome so we we have heard about the china crackdown we've heard about um, lots of different things i i noted yesterday as a possible chart um, um, to pay attention to would be NIO and NIO was pulling back into trend but then China cracking down on a bunch of a uh, bunch of things they don't like the fact that so many Chinese companies are rushing to the US markets and it may affect IPOs and other things and so we're seeing um, any Chinese issue stock right now getting pretty heavily damaged by that. This is another thing that could really drag us down because there's been so much wild speculation on stocks that have never ever made any money. They, they, they make no profits. Um, and so there's been so much wild speculation on those um, that a lot of folks could be heavily damaged here um, on this news that China is cracking down on this and trying to slow uh, the move of Chinese stocks over into the U.S. market. So watch that closely. We're seeing NIO and KLA um, getting hit pretty hard here, breaking down through supports. All of these were supposed to be the greatest thing going and now not looking so good. We're starting to see um, things like um, even um, Alibaba um, really getting hurt here um, on this news, um, breaking support levels, reaching new lows um, here in the chart. So these are going to be affecting our indexes as well as they continue to be pressed down. Um, even Baidu, um, I was looking at Baidu for a potential buy um, back over here 
Um, and um, obviously now Baidu is setting new lows um, in the market. All of these, all of these um, high speculation stocks just getting pretty well hammered here. Um, so watch that close. Now there are stocks out there that could um, could benefit from this. Let's take a look at some of those um, inverse ETFs. Say for example, RWM. RWM is actually a position I already own a little bit of. RWM is the inverse on the um, um, IWM index. And it is a direct inverse. It's not leveraged, it's a direct inverse. And you can see that's spiking above its 50 day moving average. Now, the critical thing here on a chart like this, if you're looking for a hedge, if you're looking for a way to protect yourself if the market continues to sell off, let's wait for a pattern to develop. Don't just rush into this. Remember, this is spiked up four days in a row. What we wanna see now is that that pattern where we kind of rest or pull back here and we hold in that 50 day moving average area. This is that rounded bottom breakout pattern that we talk about um, over and over in, um, in charts. Um, and there it's, it's a great productive pattern. So we wanna look for that pattern to maybe develop and you could pick up some of this as a hedge in case we continue to get these shock waves in the market or we continue to get that selling, this is one of those places that we'll pick up. Now, I also own a little bit of DOG and DOG is the direct inverse of the, the Dow. And you can see DOG yesterday uh, um, was pulling back and now this morning it's bumping up into its 50 day moving average. That possibility if that additional selling comes through, we could actually produce that rounded bottom breakout here in dog. Um, another place that you can look, but it's going to take a while for this to, to develop that pattern. SH, SH would be the direct inverse of the S&P 500 and uh, PSQ. Now you can use the leveraged ETFs, but one of the reasons I go to the, uh, go to some of these without leverage is because I can actually hold them longer. Leveraged ETFs are meant as the quick trader. These I can hold just a little bit longer without fear of theta decay that you're going to experience in those um, leveraged ETFs. So those are some places that you can go and look for a little bit of safety. Other places you might go for some safety are some of just the boring old common stocks out there that um, uh, benefit um, when people rush to safety. Take a look at um, Hershey. Hershey yesterday had a, a big move. It's pulling back this morning, but notice how strong Hershey has been. These old simple dividend payers, everybody's gonna want chocolate, even if the market comes apart and um, holding up quite well here um, overall. Take a look at Clorox. CLX has made um, a uh, rounded bottom breakout pattern here. Notice we popped up here into our 50, We're holding that 50 in here and now we're starting to extend up. Now this morning we're pulling back just a little bit um, on that big move yesterday, but there's that pattern that we like to look for. There could be some safety in some of these old boring companies out there. Might be a little bit of safety that can be picked up um, in stocks like that. Other places that you might want to look is take a look at like GIS. GIS perked up yesterday. This is just one of those old boring companies, but um, anything that pays a substantial dividend um, could be a place that folks um, seek to. Notice it's pulling back here this morning pretty hard, so it's not ready for prime time yet. But um, look to those um, um, standard things that we're going to need even if the market does falter. One thing that I would suggest to stay away from, I would stay away from the really high speculation stocks. We're going to see stocks like um, space, um, things like this that are really high implied volatility 
they could be um, those options will will get extremely overpriced um, be careful with these we're going to see a lot of those um, high speculation uh, trades out there in um, EVs and things like that, companies that have never made any money, um, those implied volatilities are going to spike, making them relatively dangerous to trade. So it might be wise to stay away from those kind of things. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a, a great day. And I know it's hard to say things like that because I, it's going to be a painful day for a lot of folks. And I get it. I get it. It's going to be painful. Um, and don't be too surprised if it doesn't get a little bit worse uh, before it gets better. Just because we have extended this market so, so dramatically that... Um, the pullback in here could be relatively painful. Um, remember, what we've created up here now is we've created a pretty ugly topping pattern. And even if we rally back, that's going to serve as a pretty substantial resistance area now um, to the upside. So even if we do rally back, watch for that potential that we could continue the move to the downside. Not saying that's going to happen, not trying to predict that's going to happen. Um, just as if I was not predicting that we would get this move today. Just the caution to be careful because that possibility did exist as we continue to extend. There's more and more danger um, in the market. So hopefully you're not um, hurt too badly. Hopefully this finds you um, in a relatively good position, not overextended um, in the market. I want to wish you all the very, very best today. Be safe. Try not to panic. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Take care, everyone.